In a previous video, I showed you the program Tinkercad, a free online 3D software modeling program that allows you to design, create, and then print on your 3D printer objects. Today, I'm going to show you another program, and that is Thingiverse.com. It's actually a website that complements Tinkercad. If we go to it here, we'll see there's all kinds of creations out there that are free for download of other people's projects that you can try at home on your 3D printer. If we go up here to the search Thingiverse, there's just millions of things out here that you can search for, and I advise trying all of them that you can think of. For one that I like to look at is fishing lures, just for example. We can see the various types of fishing lures that people have come up with and designed, and they allow you to download. If we go to one, for example, this one, I've actually downloaded this one. I have not yet got to go out fishing with it, but we'll take a quick look at this page, and you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like on each of these. It uh, gives you nice pictures, and uh, he's included some videos and showing that it actually catches a fish. You've got uh, thing details down here, which we're on. kind of goes over it. He sells these for sale. It gives you a, a list of uh, printing instructions, uh, what, what works best, PLA, PETG, the speeds and, and uh, temperatures. Uh, the thing file is here. This is actually the file that you would download. It's an STL file. You just click on it, and it will download to your computer. You can then open that up in Cura and print if you wish. Or we can edit in Tinkercad. But today, we're going to be printing a truck hitch. Now, I haven't seen a truck hitch like this yet, but I do have a truck, and I do have a hitch. Now then, uh, Matthew here had posted the Jimmy Duresta I Make sign. Now, Jimmy created this, and he's made it out of metal. It's in front of a shop, and I really like this design but I'd like to make it into a truck hitch. Now I share the iMake license plate along with Jimmy. So we'll go ahead and click on this item. And as soon as it opens here, you'll see his, uh, his creation here that he's got. And I've actually made this one. You can see another view. It's pretty thin, which is fine. We can actually use Tinkercad to make that a little thicker. Uh, we'll go down to the thing files here. Scroll down, and he's got them into two different file types. I use the STL, I'll click it one time. When I do, it'll pop up down here. I'll click on Show in Folder, and that one should highlight right there. And copy this. I'm just going to throw it onto the desktop, and I make. We'll go back over here to Tinkercad. I've got a new one here. I've actually named it. You can name it up here. You can just type in whatever you wish. I've named it Dress the Hitch. In preparation for this, go here to Import. Click on Choose a File. Now we could select it this way, or we could grab that file and drop it in here. So both options if you're doing this. I'll select the I make one, and I just leave everything else here the same. Click on import. Give it a second here. This one is a very large file. He made it so it would be a large sign. And there we go. This is quite a bit larger than my 3D printer bed, so we're going to resize it to about 6 inches in height. We'll move this down here. I'll start shrinking this down. Again, I'm just going to have to eyeball this to get the right dimensions the best I can. And uh, we'll go ahead and I'll move the ruler like I showed you guys in the past video. I'll click that on there. Again, that's very flat. And for the height here, we will actually click off of it, click on Edit Grid. I will change this over to Inches and Update Grid. Now we're in inches, click on this. We're at four inches, let's take it up to 6.0. And I'm gonna have to stretch this out until it looks correct. Looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna grab it and scoot it down a little bit. The next thing I wanna do is it's pretty darn thin. So let's go ahead and I'll click it and we will use this dot to make it a little thicker. Doesn't have to be crazy thick. The, the thicker you make it, the longer it's going to take. I just don't want it to get bumped when I walk around the truck and it get broke off. I think that'll be fine. Uh, let's go back to uh, Thingiverse. Scroll up here. And let's type in Hitch. When we do that, we get quite a few hitches here. And someone, thankfully, has created one for a hitch cover. Today we're going to use your hitch cover and redesign it for my truck. We'll go down here to 
thing files. And it's an STL. Click it. Go down here and click on show in folder. I'm going to copy that. Move to the desktop. And I'll show you the drag and drop this time. Go back to Tinkercad, click on import. Here's how you drag and route. Import. Down here it shows you it's importing. Now that we've got the hitch cover imported, I think the first thing that I want to do is to remove this mushroom piece here. And I'll do that by using one of these boxes that are essentially a hole. I'll raise it up tall enough, we'll stretch it out, and then I'll just scoot it up real nicely up against it. After doing the first one, I just repeat the process three more times. If you want, copy and pasting the boxes that make the hole makes the job go a lot faster. Now we have a very nice hitch that we can work with. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. and I'll do that by rolling it with those arrows down to 180 degrees. And we're actually going to lower it. But I want to show you something really cool. And that's that we can change the color of these objects at any time. Working with objects with different colors really makes modeling a lot nicer. So I've been bouncing around the idea of making this hitch cover also a brake light. To do that, I'm going to use a box that makes holes to remove the top off of this tube. Once done, it's time to lower the eye make guy into place and then center it. So let's go ahead and group these two together. I'll just highlight them all, hit group. Give it a second, and now they're one piece. I kind of like the color of red, so let's change it back to that. It just seems to look a little better. All right, now that I've got that, the best way to print this, if we printed it this way and using Cura, you would have to make supports to hold all these. That's not really what you want to do. It takes a lot of time. So we want to spin it. And I'll do that by grabbing this arrow. And we'll rotate it 180 degrees. Stop on 180, and it'll be perfectly flat right there. Now then I will grab this and I'll raise it up with that black arrow and wait till it hits zero. It's at zero right there, so that's where I want it. And I'll scoot it down a little bit so it'll print on my 3D printer perfectly. And that is my iMake hitch that I've just created. I'm going to go ahead and export that now. Click on the export button, change it over to STL. And it comes up as Duresta Hitch. I'll click on Show in Folder. Um, you can click on Show in Folder here, or you could just double click it. And I'll show you that. I think we've looked at it another way. We'll double click it here. You can launch it right there. And it'll open up in Cura, and then we can get an idea of how long this will take to make. There it is. Um, again, once you're in Cura, there's no more editing it. You can move it around and stuff. You could rotate it. But as far as editing or or um, actually modifying stuff like that. It all has to be done in Tinkercad or Fusion 360 or another program. Let's go ahead and uh, check over here. Uh, let's make it a 50% infill uh, density. I'd like to be stiff. It's going to have to take on the rain and snow and sun. Print temperature 250, build plate temperature 80. That's all perfect. That's mine. 50 uh, for the speed. That's my PETG speed. That's the best one that works for me. You have the option for build plate adhesion. I use the skirt. It just makes about three lines around it before it starts. Make sure that it's sticking so you get an idea. Um, that all looks good. And uh, generate support. We've got it checked. I don't see any support that probably will even need to be needed um, right here on these buttons. It probably won't need to make any support for those. It'll probably just print them, but um, go ahead and hit prepare. We'll see how long that takes. All right, as it finishes, holy schmoly, nine hours and 29 minutes. That I did not foresee. So why don't we go ahead and throw that over to the 3D printer, and then when it finishes up, I'll show you guys what it looks like.
I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. Well, I'm very happy for you. Right.